I'm with uh, Graham Cook, uh, CEO of Qubit. Correct. How are you today? Very good, thank you. Great. Uh, can you tell us what Qubit is? So Qubit is a technology to allow retailers to create more meaningful experiences with their customers. And so what you, what you have today is a very generic one-size-fits-all experience. You go onto a website, you go onto a mobile app, it's designed for everybody and really designed for no one. What Qubit does is allow a business to create a very personal relationship with every customer through personalization. So by understanding who your customer is, if they're a VIP, if they're a first time visitor, if they're a lost browser, what would you say to that customer to give them a better experience? So they eventually buy from you and you create long term meaningful relationships with them. Okay, so is it a tech, like a commerce platform or is it a design agency? It's a technology platform. So we sit between the website, the email service provider, the mobile app, and the customer data. And we create a very detailed map of all your customers, all their behavior, everything they're doing in real time. And that gives context to who your customer is and what they're doing, where they are in the buying journey and then allows you to create the right type of experience for that customer when they choose to interact with you. And so that's what it's all about. It's enabling the retailer to create experiences based on how the customer is really uh, feeling or going to interact with them that day. So it's, uh, you know, that's what we're sort of cracking. Okay, so let's say, for example, somebody has the IBM WebSphere yes. platform. Yeah, a lot of our customers do. Where would you fit into that picture? Yeah, so you know, we have 300 enterprise customers, and a, a, a large percentage of them are using IBM WebSphere. And so we'll sit in the IBM WebSphere uh, CMS, uh, our, our, our technology collecting the user data. So when the user's browsing the website, we collect that information. 70% of browsers are actually on mobile websites and that's creating a profile of all those users. And then through JavaScript, we're actually changing the experience in the page as the person's browsing the website. So we're making decisions about what that user needs to see in a personalized way alongside the IBM WebSphere's actual website. Okay, so, I mean, so that to me sounds like a CMS, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. So mm -hmm. is that, could, could you be categorized as a CMS? Yeah, we're much more of a digital experience platform and, and what that works is alongside a CMS. We are all about data. So our system is all about understanding the data about the customer. So everything, creating context. What brands have you been looking at? What sizes are you looking at? What, uh, you know, what geography are you in? Where are you coming from? That's a, data, that's a data problem. And then the whole, what do I show you? What do I call on from the CMS? What personalized message do I show you? Is all about data. And so we're interacting with the content of the content management system to create the right experience. And, and that's what scales here. It's all about right. data part of, uh, if the content management system is providing content, Qubit is providing personal context of the user. Okay, so let's say for example with the Adobe Experience Manager, mm -hmm. is that something that is replaced by Qubit or you can work with it? Yeah, we typically work alongside it. We augment a lot of technologies. So okay. the Adobe Experience Manager is, you know, it's the leading CMS. It's, it, and it has a lot of assets or, or content assets in there. We will be able to call on those content assets and, and organize them in a better way. We are, I mean, my, my background, I was at Google for five years. My co-founder was at Google. We built big data systems at Google for AdWords. And then I worked for my last two years on Google Analytics. And so what we bring to the industry right now is a high data volume machine learning approach to creating more personalized experiences. And the content management systems are, are lacking that ability. Right, so this is actually very interesting because ultimately there's so much data yeah. that merchandisers and marketers right now have to go through and figure out and then go modify the CMS yeah. to display the right products. You're automating all that process. Exactly, so that's a completely unscalable way of doing things. And so we're living in this data deluge right now. There's more data than anybody can handle. And so what we're doing is we're saying to the marketer or the merchandiser, here's the stuff you should look at. This is important. You've, you've got this customer segment, they've bought from you before, they're putting these brands in their basket and then they're abandoning. 
What do you want to do with this segment? Well, here's what we recommend. We recommend you send these guys an email after seven days of that browse. And that in that email, this is the message you need to say. And that brings users back. And I mean, this is what we're doing with brands like BCBG, um, who we've generated 9x ROI for in the, in, the, in the first three months of working with them, working with Pixel Media, who implemented all the technology. You know, the, what, what these guys are doing is they're just creating much richer, more personalized journeys that enable the merchandisers and the marketers to focus on what's most important, which is their customer. So they're not thinking about systems, they're not thinking about content, they're thinking about their customer. And that's really the heart of what we do. Okay, so um, you mentioned like nine times R the ROI, ROI. improvement. Yeah. How do you measure that ROI? So everything, a really core part of our system and something that not many other businesses in the personalization space have invested in is everything we do is A-B tested. So every personalization you run, if you create an experience that's designed for new users, you'll have the, you'll have the original version of that website hosted by IBM WebSphere, and then you'll have the qubit augmented version hosted on top of IBM WebSphere as well. And what that augmented version is, uh, is, is literally doing is 50% are seeing that, 50% are seeing the original, and then our system says, actually, yes, this drove a 5% uplift for that segment of customer. So we're very against A-B testing on its own. We think that's a waste of time. But when you use A-B testing to validate your personalization strategy, you get a very definitive result about what the uplift has been. So marketers can go back and say, we invested in personalization and it drove us 30x ROI. They can go back with a number, they can talk about the revenue it drove. Okay, great. Yeah, because that's like, um the details on how mm -hmm. ROI is calculated, it's sometimes a, a mystery for me. People throw out these numbers yeah. all the time, but what exactly did it mean? So I wanted to, that's, that's yeah. good to know. It's, thrown out, it, it's a mystery because technology vendors take advantage of the fact that, that, that most marketers don't understand statistics. And statistics is a complicated field. We launched a white paper about how we do A-B testing and personalization, and we put it onto Hacker News at 32,000 downloads. Because people are curious about what, how to measure uplift and measure success. We have this brand in the UK we work with, Chain Reaction Cycles, our global cycle retailer. They implement our technology, generated 21 million pounds from our technology. Again, it's validated in a way that the CFO of the company can see the results of that data and say, we really did drive this uplift. And, and that's a core part of our brand. We like to demystify the confusion about how to do ROI measurement and everything is open, it's an open box. You can see all the information and validate this yourself. Okay, so, so you actually work with the customers to define the metrics on how to measure the ROI? Exactly, so we look at, the core metric is revenue per visitor. So what, when you're doing personalization, what impact do you have on the revenue per visitor? Then you look at conversion rate, then you look at revenue per converter, which is things like basket size. Those are the core metrics. Then we have things like lifetime value. And we actually, one of our first customers was Topshop, the Arcadia Group in the UK. And working with the team there, they pushed us to validate to their CFO the numbers we were generating. And that rigor showed us how important it was to, be, to, to build this into our core business and our core product. Great, so with um, BCBG mm -hmm. that you're making an announcement right now, what exactly did BCBG use Qubit for? So BCBG came to us, you know, where we work best with businesses. So traditionally businesses go out and buy technology. They just do an R, we need A-B testing, we need personalization, they do an RFP and they buy technology. We work best with businesses when they come with a business problem. And so BCBG said, look, we want to, we, number one, we got to increase email signups. We have seen that email is a key part of our marketing strategy through things like custom audiences. It's a key part of our retention strategy. It's a key part of all, so we need to do email. And so we help them with Pixel Media increase their email signup rate by 10x. And we wanted to make sure we're doing that in a way that isn't driving sales down. So, that, so they managed to increase signups by 10x while driving sales up by 6%. And so what they're doing uh, additionally is focusing on geo strategies. How do they appropriately market to somebody in LA versus somebody in New York? You know, they have 500 stores globally. They have a really important geographic strategy. So they're thinking right now with Pixel Media, their partner, is how to build really localized 
uh, strategies uh, on the digital platforms. So you actually will get a completely different experience based on where you are, relevant to where you are, and it makes complete sense as a, as a customer, you know, to be treated that way, to be, you know, what the weather is, all these sort of things. Right, right, great. So you're telling me um, that the company is based in the UK? Mm -hmm. And there is a story behind why it was started there. Yeah, so we, we're based in London. We're about 265 people globally. We started the company in London. I was at Google in London. My co-founder, Emery, was at Google New York. And we said, where should we start this business? And I'd done a piece of research while I was at Google. And, and that was, what is the e-commerce capital of the world? Where is there the most spend per capita on e-commerce? And we found out it was London. It was the British consumer loves to buy online. And not only that, but advertising, digital advertising in the UK is over 50% now of media spend. The, the British consumer loves digital. And so we thought this is where there's the most complexity, the biggest customer challenges with e-commerce. So let's start the business in London, learn from the British consumer, learn from the British retailer, and then we'll take that and we'll globally export it. And that's been our strategy and it's worked really well. That's very smart. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I'm fortunate to work with a brilliant team, and uh, you know, the last six years have been uh, it's been a it's been a wild ride. I've loved every bit. I've loved working with all of our customers, um, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, we get to work with some really brilliant brands. You know, some brands that really really push us hard, uh, which has been great. Right, right. So, um, what's in the picture in the next 12 to 12 months for Qubit. Yep, so we're, I mean, we, you know, we, our journey has been about, um, you know, building the business and the technology. You know, we've raised uh, $76 million in funding to get us to where we are today. We're, we're about going break even now. It's about, it's about taking the business into, uh, into a really sustainable place. Uh, you know, planning for you know an IPO in a couple of years from now. We've got really big, uh, got a really big product launch next year. For us, it, it's in all our customers. It's all about machine learning. It's all about predictive. How do you create the right experience um, at scale? So how do you create one-to-one -one experience at scale? It's a, it's a, it's effectively it's an artificial intelligence problem. And so we've we've made a huge investment in that. We've got some very exciting announcements coming up. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank this you, is fascinating and. We'll uh, be following up with 2-Bit. Look forward to it. Thanks very much. Thank you.